what is going on guys it's the mad dragon we're on to round two of the six nations 2024 which means we need to go over my fantasy team for round two go over my picks why i've picked the players i have give some thoughts on how i've got to this final decision a couple of other players that i've missed out on and uh, why i've missed them off the list all that fun stuff let me know uh, who's making your fantasy team what changes would you make to my team along the way we'll start out then by taking a look at the uh, the team there were some there were some changes that needed to be made from last week that Man, I still not quite managed to fit this team exactly how I wanted, uh, but there's there's a couple of things I would want to change, but unfortunately, even the, the, the fantasy, the way it works, hasn't worked out for me. Um, now, I am also still sticking to my one extra rule that you guys don't have to play with at all, uh, where basically, I am only picking players in the exact position they are playing in. So I've got one right winger, one left winger, and a fullback. I'm not just allowed to have three left wingers all at the same time. The only area that you may think, what's going on here then, is is uh, I do have three number eights <laughs> in the back row. That is all perfectly legit this round because uh, Matt Ferguson's playing open side, Kalen Doris is playing blindside, and Ben Earl is at number eight this week. So I've got three number eights, but they are all playing in their correct shirt position. So a lot to go through in, uh, in this one. I am still sticking to that rule. Don't think I'm uh, trying to cheat or anything. So starting out, in the back three then. I've gone for Calvin Nash, Tomo Ramos, and uh, Duhan van der Merwe. Now, I wanted to have a winger from Ireland, of course, going up against Italy. I thought it's probably the best chance for a winger to, to get out there. Calvin Nash, I thought, played well last week. Absolutely willing to uh, to keep him back in the team. Ramos, because going up against Scotland, I can see France wanting to take a lot of kicks. Ramos is going to be their key kick taker. I think that's going to generate me some points. And they're uh, seeing as well as how deep sometimes Scotland can kick. Uh, I can see some maybe some counterattacks coming. On the left wing, I've got Duhan van der Merwe and uh, I was kind of tempted to get rid of Duhan van der Merwe he did very well for me last week he was my captain he scored extremely well going up against France might be a little bit different I was tempted to try and fit BLBRE into this side and, uh, and add another French player in there but I didn't have the number of players you can only have four from each team so I've stuck with Duhan van der Merwe I'm going to hope he, uh, he turns up for that game versus France on to the centre partnership it's an all Welsh centre uh, and I'm not 100% convinced by this um, we've got a couple of changes going on uh, you know the Irish centre partnership has switched up this week we haven't got Bendiaki or anyone in uh, in terms of my the rest of my players I'd already picked four from Ireland I already had four from England got a couple of French a couple of, uh, of Scottish players I thought George North getting back into the Wales team against England might have the opportunity for some big runs so I wanted George North in the team the 12 shirt was causing me issues um, I, I was really struggling to pick a 12 this round the 112 that i did actually want was men and cello uh, but the fantasy doesn't have him down as a center it has him down as a back three player so i can't have men and cello in there and i sort of went through the list maybe Stuart mccloskey could also be a really good call here but i've already got all my irish players in the team uh, so we're sticking with uh, with nick tompkins for now in the halfback partnership, Jack Crowley and Alex Mitchell. Um, I really went sort of in between with uh, with whether to go for Jack Crowley or to go for George Ford. I think George Ford's going to take a lot of kicks. Jack Crowley being the kick taker for Ireland up against Italy, where I'm seeing potentially big points coming in. The one thing that's maybe making me question this decision is whether or not I think he's going to play the full game. I could see him maybe coming off at halftime. That one might come back to bite me, but I'm, uh, I'm going to go for the Irish kicker anyway. Uh, and Alex Mitchell at scrum half got me a try last week. Going to stick with uh, Alex Mitchell for this week. In the back row, as mentioned, then three number eights, but they're not all playing number eight this week. They've all moved around. Matt Ferguson going in um, in that open side, finding a six with my remaining players was a little bit tough. Um, it basically left me with, do I want to pick Matt Ferguson or do I want Alex Mann from Wales is basically what I was left with. I've gone for Matt Ferguson. I'm hoping he's going to have a little bit of a better performance than he did last week. Kalen Doris in at seven. He's the captain over in Ireland now playing the blind side because uh, Josh van der Fleer move to the bench so uh, I'm going to absolutely take the advantage and have Caelan Doris on my side and then Ben Earl because I always expect him to have a big game especially you know, against Wales where maybe a bit of room opens up I think maybe some carry meters could be uh, good for Ben Earl in this one lock department all English all English lockout in the lock department Oli Chesham and Mauro Toje the Welsh line out last week didn't look great. Really didn't look great. And I've uh, I've gone for double capitalizing on that. Now, Elliot D's throwing the lineouts for Wales. I'm expecting the lineouts to be better. But in that second half, Ryan Elias will come on. 
And uh, this is where I expect these boys to potentially score some points, stealing line outs away from uh, from Wales and try and punish them at that set piece area. And then in my front row, I've gone for a power front row. We've still got Cyril Bai and Antonio. I think they're going to do well against the uh, the Scotland boys. Scotland conceded a few issues at the scrum time, actually, even on their own putting. And uh, Wales got some good points from that. So I've gone for the French boys. I'm hoping they're going to score me some uh, some good points. And then Dan Sheehan in at hooker, going up against Italy, driving more times, a solid line out thrower. That's why I've gone for Dan Sheehan. So that is my team overall and the reasons why. Uh, in terms of my uh, my captain and my super sub and all that good stuff, uh, I've gone for Calvin Nash um, as my, my winger. Um, I, I like going for wingers as captains. I was also kind of tempted to look at someone like Kaelin Doris, potentially. Um, I, I think Calvin Ash should be able to outperform Duan van der Merwe, so I've gone for Calvin Ash as, uh, as my captain. And then as my super sub, I've gone for Julien Marchand, like I said in uh, about the, the French forward pack. I think they're going to have potentially an advantage over Scotland. And in that second half, the Scottish bench hasn't, uh, you know, completely swayed me to believe that Scotland are going to be able to take that in the second half. Julian Marchand coming on from the bench, late minute tries to seal out the game. I can see some uh, some driving ball tries coming in there. So that's my team for round two, guys. Not Still not 100% convinced. I would maybe want someone else instead of Tompkins. I might want to pick Men and Cello in there if I could, if the game allowed me to. Um, I've gone for my four Irish players. I've got four English players. Three French plus fourth, if you include uh, Marchand, and then two um, Scottish players. I don't think going up against Ireland is the right time for me to uh, to pick some of the Italian team, uh, but I can definitely see a couple of those Italian lads. I'm so annoyed I couldn't fit Menoncello in there. Is that uh, is that centre? Would have been my way to go, guys. But of course, we'll be going over my results in Monday's video, so make sure you are subscribed to know when that video comes out. You're one of the first people to check it out. I hope everyone else gets on well with the fantasy. Make sure you drop it down in the comment section. Who is making your team? Who is your captain? All all that good stuff I enjoy having to read through the comments, guys. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.